There are two principal complications when solving linear systems. One of them is dealing with real repeated eigenvalues. The other, of course, is complex eigenvalues. Let's focus on real repeated eigenvalues, extending what we did back in 2D to the setting of arbitrary dimensions. When you have real repeated eigenvalues, then your Jordan block, which I'm just going to call J, has some number, let's say K, eigenvalues, lambda, all along the diagonal, all repeated, and then everything else in the matrix is zero except for ones along the super diagonal. Now, our goal in solving linear systems, of course, is to compute powers of this J and to exponentiate this matrix to compute e to the j t. Because of the block diagonal structure, we can work one block at a time. Let's begin with a lemma about taking powers of such a block j. j to the nth is the following k by k matrix. We have lambda to the n along the diagonal. Along the top row, the entries go first lambda to the n, of course, then n times lambda to the n minus 1. Then n choose 2 times lambda to the n minus 2, where again, n choose 2 is n times n minus 1, all divided by 2 factorial. Then n choose 3, lambda to the n minus 3. Then that keeps going all the way down until in this k by k matrix, we have n choose k minus 1 times lambda to the n minus k plus 1. Now this row gets repeated row by row by row, shifting over by one every time until you get to the last row, which just has lambda to the n, the first term. Everything else in this matrix is zero. This is an upper triangular matrix. Now, how do you prove something like this? It seems like a difficult computation. Well, those n choose k kinds of coefficients are really telling you that there's uh, something binomial going on here. And if I think about this matrix J, I can indeed think of it as a sum of two matrices. The first being the diagonal matrix lambda i, and the second being this matrix n, that is zero everywhere except for the ones on the super diagonal. Now, you may recall this from volume two as well, but now we're going to take it up a bit. If I take this matrix N and I multiply it by itself, I do not get the zero matrix like we got in 2D. Rather, I get the matrix that has zeros everywhere, but ones on the super, super diagonal. It's kind of like they just ratchet up one notch. They move over one row, up one column kind of a thing. Now, by induction, you can show that n cubed moves that super diagonal up yet another notch, and we keep going until eventually we get the zero matrix. We say that such a matrix n, whose finite power vanishes, is a nilpotent matrix. What a cool name, nilpotent. Oh, and here's why this is so cool. If I take j to the nth power, that is, I take quantity n plus lambda i to the nth power, then applying the binomial theorem to this power, I can express this as the sum, j goes from 0 to n, of n choose j times capital N to the j times lambda i to the n minus j. Let's go term by term and see what we get. When j equals 0, then I get n choose 0, which is just 1, times n to the 0, which is the identity, times lambda i to the n. That's just lambda to the n times the identity. That's going to be a nice diagonal matrix. That's going to give us our diagonal. What comes next? The next term is going to be n choose 1 times lambda to the n minus 1 times n. There are some identity matrices and some power, but they don't really do anything. Next term, n choose 2, lambda to the n minus 2, n squared. And this keeps going all the way up through n choose k minus 1, lambda to the n minus k minus 1, capital N to the k minus 1. 
The first entry in this series is going to be our diagonal. It's just lambda to the nth times the identity matrix. The second entry is giving us n, that's n choose 1, times lambda to the n minus 1 times this matrix n that just has things on the super diagonal. And then the next term with capital N squared, that's the super super diagonal, the thing above the super diagonal, and, and we keep going. This is where all of these terms come from. Now, if you step back and think about what we claimed was true when we were talking about kth order systems in discrete time, and we said that the basis solutions are lambda to the n, and n times lambda to the n, and n squared times lambda to the n, all the way down the line. Well, the reason why those are the basis solutions is that that's what appears on the first row of this power up to the arbitrary coefficients, the, the sort of uh, choose k part where you've got those k factorials in there. But also powers of lambda, those are in the arbitrary coefficients as well. We can get rid of that to simplify things. That's why the basis solutions look the way that they do. Now we have a similar result with exponentiating this matrix. I claim that e to the jt is the k by k matrix that has e to the lambda t along the diagonals. And then along the top row, you have the following entries. The first is e to the lambda t, of course. Then t e to the lambda t. Ah, that makes sense. Then, watch this, t squared over 2 factorial e to the lambda t, and that keeps going until at the end you have t to the k minus 1 over quantity k minus 1 factorial times e to the lambda t. All subsequent rows repeat this, shifting over by one step each time. This matrix is upper triangular, zeros below the diagonal. The proof of this is the same exact idea, decomposing our matrix J as lambda i plus capital N and then exponentiating jt, breaking this up into e to the lambda i times e to the n, all with t's in there, of course, gives us e to the lambda i t times quantity i plus n t plus 1 over 2 factorial n squared t squared plus 1 over 3 factorial n cubed t cubed. You can see how this keeps going by the definition of the matrix exponential. But because capital N to the K vanishes, this matrix exponential series terminates after a finite number of steps. This is why the matrix looks the way it does. It's constant along all these super diagonals with increasing terms coming from the exponential series. And this is why in continuous time kth order systems, the basis solutions for repeated real eigenvalues lambda are e to the lambda t, then t e to the lambda t, then t squared e to the lambda t, and continuing with higher powers of t. When you exponentiate this matrix, you're really getting those powers of t, that t to the j divided by j factorial. We don't put in those factorial terms. We ignore those coefficients. Why? Because when you're using basis solutions, you're taking an arbitrary linear combination, the constants don't really matter.